Okay, here I am in editor p5js.org. That's the website we've been working on. It's the p5js web editor. Um, before I make this video, this video which is dedicated to adding images, inserting images into our sketches, I need to stress a couple of things. Number one, before I do anything, um, most of us shouldn't have to sign up at this point. We should be logging in. And when we log in, we're going to be logging in with Google. I'm going to get myself logged in. Okay, now that I'm logged in, you'll see it says hello, and there's me, my name, right? I can go into my sketches. I don't have to go that, go there right now, but I'm going to leave it at that. I'm also, by the way, looking over here to the other side. I'm going to make this a little bigger because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing a little better. So I'm keeping my screen nice and big. And so, again... Um, once you're signed in, remember, if it doesn't say hello in your name, if you can't go into your sketches, then, ladies and gentlemen, you really need to make sure you are logged in before you do any of that, okay? So, that's number one. Number two, before you begin any sketch, I highly recommend that P5 names the programs, right, when they give our default drawing you know, it's a canvas 400 by 400 and background 220, which is a light gray, right? Before you do anything, you should come over here to the pencil and edit the name. Since I'm working on practicing adding images, that's what I'm going to call it. Um, and then I go to file and make sure that I save the image. If you do not see that sketch saved, um, you may not, you may do all this great coding and then you go back to your sketches and it's not there. So if you look, practice adding images January 20th, that's today, the day I'm making it at 8.22 a.m. And I'm going to go back to the editor and now I need to go a little further. So next thing I need to do on the right, under the play and stop button, that is run, run and end, play and stop, as we may call them, is this little arrow that points to the right will open a menu of files that we have. So we haven't been using the index. We haven't been using the style.css. HTML and CSS are going to be some things that we may get to explore later on in the spring as we get further along in programming in JavaScript itself, making the sketch. However, we're going to need to upload a file. But before we're going to upload a file, we actually have to find a file. So I'm going to look for a silly cat is really what I want to do. I'm going to go try to find some images for silly cats. I'm even going to take it a step further and say under the tools, I want to go to color and see if I can get a transparent background on my silly cat. And I'm going to pick this one here and right click and save the image as. It will ask you want to, where you want to put it. By the way, I have it already, so I'm just going to click again. I'm calling it Winking Cat. My computer is going to say, hey, wait a minute, you already have that file. I will replace it. But for you guys, it'll be a first time save. And make sure that you save an image. Okay, there's that little message I mentioned. You won't get that. You'll just, it'll ask you to save. You'll save it. It'll go. It's in there. I don't need this tab open anymore. I'm going to come over here. So as I mentioned, in the sketch files, we need to upload this picture that we want to use. So it says click here to find in the file browser. And there it is. I have all these different pictures I have. I'm going to use my winking cat. I'm going to open it up. When you see that nice black line, that means that it's loaded all the way. You can close that little black X. You can close that image upload file. And if you want you can rename it. Now, I don't like spaces in my file name, so I'm going to leave it. You know what? I'll make it even simpler. I'm going to call it cat. So I have this file cat.png. Okay, easy enough, easy enough. So the next thing I need to do is up above, I'm going to add some comments. First of all, I need to create a variable to hold your image. Okay, I'm going to do let, that's setting up, and cat will be the name of it, and that's all I have to do, just tell it 
that I want to have this image. I'm going to go to line four and the next step is going to be create a preload function to get your image ready. So here we go. It's just like below on function setup and function draw. This is function preload. We have an open close and then an open curly brace. And the curly brace is going to be where we actually do this preload. Now, again, the name of my variable is cat. I'm going to let set cat equal to load capital I load image. And now I need to call that image cat.png. It is case sensitive. It's very important that you have it like that. And remember at the end of a line, we need to do a semicolon. The last thing that we need to do in the, in the draw function. So here we go. After the background on line 14, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to give you some syntax as we've been practicing. So here we go on line 15. My image syntax is going to be image, which calls the variable and sets it at an X and a Y. And you don't necessarily have to have the width and the height. The width and the height are optional. So I'll put that down below. Width and height are optional. Okay, but now let's do the actual function image. The name of my variable is cat. I'm going to start by placing it, try to be about center. Now center would be at 200 on the X coordinate X variable and 200 on the Y coordinate, you know, the axes. So that should be somewhere dead center. At least the top left hand corner should be. And I'm going to leave it at that at 200, 200. Let's see if it fits onto the canvas. So I'm going to run that. And uh oh, he started at the center over here. Here's 200, 200, but he's a little too big. So maybe if I were to check on my file, I'm going to bring that over here on my file. I'm going to right click on that and look at the properties. And on the property details, I could find that my image is 240 by 240. That's not too big, so I like that. I can make it 240 by 240. What's half of 240 is 120, and 200 minus 120 is 80. 80. So that should bring it way up over here, and it should look like it's center. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so now it's centered on the page, right? What if I want to change the width and the height? Now, I know that the... 240 by 240, by the way, I'll put that over here. Original image is 240 pixels by 240 pixels. And if I want to make it smaller, I still need to keep a one-to-one -one ratio. So I'm going to make it 120 by 120. And I could run it. It'll make it smaller. Oh, but now it's not so low. So I have to change that. And if I'm only 120, hmm, 200 minus 60 is 140, 140, just showing you how I'm centering it. And there we go. So now I have this awesome image inserted in, and that's about where we're going to stop.